Hello, my name is Diego Vasquez. My two partners for this project are Juan Escamilla and Vicente Fernandez. Our project mentor is Simone Morton, and we are the long-toed salamanders of the watch program at Pajaro Valley High School. Our project was based off the effects of soil moisture on coverboard diversity, primarily amphibians. First off, what is a coverboard? A coverboard is a three foot by three foot piece of wood that is used as an active habitat for creatures found in that area. For this project, we use six coverboards in six different locations in the same woodland area. Two variables were tested using the cover boards. We would water three of the boards using two three liter buckets to wet the area under the cover board and leave the other three dry. The only difference being that we did not wet the dry cover boards. We wanted to do this project because we, we know amphibians are important in maintaining the food web of Elkhorn Slough and are capable of transferring nutrients between ponds and land but the population of amphibians are rapidly declining due to the rapid changes in our environment. Our testable question was, the soil moisture affect the abundance in, of amphibians and terrestrial invertebrates under coverboards at Oakhorn Slough. Our project took place at an oak woodland along the Long Valley Loop Trail, more specifically where the red dot is on the picture on the left, right over here. Hmm and the cover boards were relatively close to each other, as shown in the picture on the right. The blue dots being the wet cover boards on the left side, and the dry boards on the right side, the yellow dots. Here is a side-to-side -side comparison to what the study site looked like before it rained with the picture on the left, and after it rained with the picture on the right. What sticks out the most is these two pictures is the amount of grass that has grown after it rained, as shown by all the green in this area here. Our hypothesis for this project was when soil moisture increases, so will the diversity and abundance of amphibians. We supported this hypothesis because amphibians have gills. They would rather be in moist habitats rather than dry habitats. After arriving to our study site, we would take metadata. This consisted of air temperature and relative humidity using the spark view kit. Then we would measure leaf litter with the meter stick on the first cover board that we would examine as well as the rest. After that we would assign team roles which would consist throughout the day. The recorder slash reporter would record data found under the cover boards onto the iPad so we can place them in graphs and also took pictures of what was found under the cover boards. The board examiner looks and collects what is under the cover board. The soil collector collects soil samples for soil moisture and MPK testing. Soil moisture was found using GLOBE's pedosphere depth protocol, which is where we would collect soil samples at five centimeters deep and 30 centimeters deep. Then we would weigh the soil samples. After that, we would let it dry for one week and then weigh them again and subtract the difference. If the process was done on a wet cover board, about 19 liters of water was used to water around the cover board and inside the cover board. After that, we would place a hobo sensor under the soil, which measured the soil's temperature periodically every 15 minutes. Materials. Buckets would be used to transfer water from the guzzler to the cover board. They would also be used to collect frogs, for a short period of time. The spark BK would be used to take metadata. Gloves were used in order to protect the amphibian and ourselves when we were collecting them. The MPK soil test kit were used to measure nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the soil. Some other materials that we also used was a shovel and a soil saying to get fine soil. And now on to our results. Starting with these pie graphs, they show the abundance between wet and dry cover boards. The wet cover boards had a large amount of frogs. They had a total of 28 frogs found under them throughout the whole data collection process, as well as having a large amount of isopods found under them, 178 isopods to be exact. The dry cover boards were almost the opposite of the wet cover boards they had no frogs and little isopods under them. The species that were most present in them were crickets and spiders. Weather was a big part of our research project. 
This is why we chose to show how it affected our diversity under the cover boards. Simpson's Diversity Index is used to measure diversity and it is scaled from a value of 0 to 1 and the closer the value gets to 1, the more diversity that is under our cover boards. Before, before rain, diversity was low in dry cover boards while being high in the wet boards. After rain, the dry cover boards saw a large increase in diversity, but the wet boards only saw little to no change in diversity. Overall though, wet cover boards tended to have more diversity than the dry ones. These bar charts show soil moisture. The first two bars on each graph are before rain and the last two cases on each graph are after rain. You can see how wet cover boards had more moisture than dry boards. Also, how dry boards had little moisture to begin with, but after the rain, it increased. Finally, this is a graph showing the precipitation throughout our whole data collection process. You can see that notable precipitation began November 26, with precipitation overall beginning on November 17th. So what did we learn? From doing this research project, we learned that frogs and invertebrates are important parts of ecosystems as they are a source of nutrients and they carry nutrients throughout different areas themselves. What we learned from our data and results is that water is also an important part of an ecosystem as it could greatly alter the composition of an ecosystem. How can stakeholders use this information? Frog species such as the red-legged frog are currently in decline and conservation groups can use this information to further study the behavior of amphibians and specifically frogs and also know what attracts them and what increases their abundance in an oak woodland area. They can also use this information by understanding the importance of terrestrial invertebrates in an oak woodland system. We all enjoy science, all three of us, and it is something we hope to get into in the future. So what we enjoyed the most from this project was applying the scientific method in real life. Throughout school, we've just been doing simple experiments and labs, not really having an actual experience of what it is like to do science. So it was really a good experience to learn how science is done in the real world and do it ourselves. Acknowledgement. We would like to thank Simone Morton for helping us with our research project. We would also like to thank the Esner staff, as well as Dave Feliz for providing the mature cover boards needed for our project.